Hello and welcome to the Should You Buy for the Flea. Now this video has been a long time coming because the flea has been announced as a possible mech for the game forever. As in, if we take a, a peek here, the flea was originally posted with its concept art in September of 2012 which is approximately five and a half years ago from the recording of this video. Holy crap. But it's finally here. And as we get back to its page here, we are definitely going to scratch that itch because people have been looking for this mech for a very long time. So there's some almost nostalgia now about the flea, the fact that it is actually getting into the game. So we're going to take a look at the mech, its hard points, its possible hitboxes based off its concept art, hard point locations and such, and see whether or not you should buy this mech. All right, let's go through it. So it is a light. So therefore, the packs are slightly reduced in cost, which is quite nice considering the fact that the mech will be fairly cheap for C bills when it eventually does come out. We have a standard pack of $15 that gets you the three standard variants of the, the 17, 15, and 19. And the collector's pack for $30 gets you the 17 as the special, which is a 30% C bill boost on it. Of course, mech bays, premium time, cockpit items, titles and badges, and all of that stuff goes along with those packs. We have the hero add-on, the Romeo 5000, and it's mech bay for $10, and the reinforcement add-on, the 20, and the FA, the fire ant. Very important to note, the fire ant is not a hero. It's just a named variant, which is cool. We don't really have those yet in the game where we have a specific variant of a mech with a name that isn't a Seabill boosted hero. So cool. Uh, would have been nice maybe to have a second hero, but who, whatever. But then again, those are $10 as well. Ultimate pack is $50 and that's just everything all added together. Of course, just like I always say, it'd be nice if it was $5 off in this case, since it's only a $50 pack. $45, you get a little $5 savings for buying everything at once. Would feel good. Early adopter rewards. If you pre-order before March 31st, uh, you get these extra bonuses. So some extra cockpit items, the virus pattern, two new decals, the flea and the meep meep, which meep meep was probably going to be quite fun. Uh, some colors and a little bit of sea bills to help with leveling or uh, modifying them when you get them. These are 20 ton inner sphere battle mechs, as we have maximum engine rating of 170. They come with a 120, so you definitely want to upgrade that. And uh, endo steel, pretty much for everybody, which is nice. You won't have to pay to upgrade that. Although several of them do have single heat sinks, so that will be a cost. No jump jets for the chassis. We have ECM on one of the variants, the 20, which is a reinforcement variant. And we have mask on three of the variants, the 17, which is in the standard pack and is also the collector's edition one, which can be Seville boosted, as well as both of the reinforcement variants. We're going to take a look at the spreadsheet warrior here and take a look at what it can do with engines. Now, I'm probably going to have to view this on a full screen 1080p in order to see these numbers, but I'll make sure to go through them. The flea is a 20 ton battle mech. So it's the same size as the locust and the piranha and stuff like that. So we're going to be looking at very small engines as it doesn't have much weight to go around. But if we look at the breakpoints specifically of engines down at this weight, if you take the XL125, which is just five points higher than the stock engine that comes with, you're able to take that one less external heatsink as we are below 250. We're going to have to take additional heatsinks with the engine. And you can get sort of like a 108 kph tweaked. That's all right. Endo and light ferro, and I'll describe why I'm taking light ferro here in a second. But if we go for the next heatsink break, we have 150. 
which gets up, up to 130 after a speed tweak, but the engine weight is 4. At a XL170, which is a max engine, it's the exact same engine weight with like no extra and like no extra weight and you're just going 18 kph faster 148 yeah you just take that every single time so i think the xl170 on this will most likely be the engine for it uh there is maybe a conversation about having a light 170 maybe it just feels like that would be a little heavy you're gonna lose out a lot on your pod space so eh, it's probably not worth it at this tonnage range now the reason why we took light armor instead of ferro which will adjust based on your individual build as there are a few mechs in this lineup that will run single heat sinks and we'll be fine with those is the lack of slots the fact is we're going to have to take four additional heat sinks with an XL170 because we need to make up to 10. The XL170 comes with six, so the heat sink up to 175 is one, the 200 is two, 225 is three, and 250 for each 25 rating. That's four extra heat sinks. That's four tons, and if you're running double heat sinks, that's 12 slots. So with only 24 slots remaining, you're only going to have 12 slots remaining in order to do your build. And with uh, 10.93, which will round up to 11, as you can do a little bit of armor shaving off the head, you can get like a, a 7, maybe 7.5 if you um, strip a little bit more, 8 if you strip your arms completely and there's a couple variants that are capable of doing that but pretty much you're going to get about seven to eight tons and 12 slots to work with so what can we do with that and let's take a look at the individual variants here as these are battle mechs we're going to look at them vertically and take a look first at the fle 17. this is a total of seven energy two in each arm and three separated across the torsos now this does have mask and a mask is one ton and if i am not mistaken increases our speed by 20 percent which with that um just shy of 150 kph to make the math easy you know it's an extra 30 just shy of 30 kph to be on adding on there so really high 170s is going to be our top speed on this mech. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it's going to be the fastest mech in the game, which is nice. But what can you do with 7 energy? Well, with your 7 tons and 12 free slots, you can do something like, say, 6 to 7 small pulse lasers. Uh, you can shave a little bit to maybe cut one of those small pulse lasers down to an ER small and get a mask on there, or just cut one of the pulse lasers completely and get a mask or an extra double heat sink, depending on what you do. So like a really fast mask enabled six small pulse striker thing, whipping behind people at 170, I think it's 177 KPH, just small pulse their back and get out of there. The drop of a, a drop of a hat, uh, which, would be kind of cool um hopefully maybe we'll get some sort of small pulse improvement as they're a little weak at the moment but maybe this will work well you could also strip both arms as you do have energy in these torsos and get enough to put on a, like a single er ppc or a single ppc with mask and then you can just be this really bloody annoying running around the outfield super fast just PPC slinger for the entire match, which could be cool, pretty cool. Alternatively, you could do something like five ER mediums or maybe six, although I think that'll be too hot, with mask and an additional DHS. It'd be pretty nice. Um, I've actually found that ah, well, you could do some stuff if you changed around your armor. ER small lasers are a little too light actually for this mech as you're actually going to run out of space in order to fit all of your double heat sinks that you would be adding to it. So 
maybe you can finagle something if you take off Pharaoh and just have standard armor with your double heat sinks and like seven ER smalls. And maybe that would work. But moving on to the FLE-15, we have a total of five energy, one in each arm and torso section, and two ballistic, one on each arm. Now you can do a lot of the same builds that you can do on the FLE-17 as you can do the same thing, the ERPPC, the five ER medium lasers, stuff like that. Only two ballistics, maybe not enough to start to worry about running machine guns. You could do something like five ER mediums, two light machine guns, and I think just like one ton of ammo, and that could possibly fit. But overall, I see it as an inferior variant compared to some of the other ones, as the other ones just boat the weapons nicer. But hey, you don't need three of a kind to level up anymore, so you can drop this particular variant. But also, there could be quirks and such that give this a particular role that the other ones cannot do. Moving on to the FLE-19, it's in the standard pack, and this is it. This is the most ballistics we've got on an IS light in the game at 8. We got four ballistics in each arm, an energy in the center torso, and a missile in the right torso. Now, unless you're going to run something like a rocket, maybe like a rocket 20, because that's only a ton and a half, you're not going to run a SRM on this. It's IS SRMs are too bloody heavy for this size of mech. This mech, it's really, it's build is using LMGs. You got to have those light machine guns. You can fit in eight light machine guns and like three, three and a half ish tons of ammo, depending on how much you want to strip from your armor. I wouldn't advise stripping anything from the arms as that's where your ballistics are. So mm, it, it is a little unfortunate that you will have just a single energy on there and you most likely won't even have the weight in order to utilize it unless you cut ammo or LMGs. So maybe you go seven LMGs, you get an ER small in there. But realistically, I see this as maybe like an eight light machine guns. Yeah, let's kick some ass with that. It'll be interesting. Uh, I still think that comparatively this to the Piranha, the IS light machine guns need a little bit of a boost compared to the clans just to I think the 8 machine gun flea should probably be about equivalent to the 12 machine gun piranha in terms of their abilities I could see that as being okay but we'll leave the balance discussions for now and we'll move on to the reinforcement pack the FLE 20 is the only one here that has ECM capability and mass capability which is quite nice it has a total of five energy, two in each arm, and one in the left torso with the ECM in the right torso. Now, you can do some of the similar builds that we did previously, where we had, say, four or five year mediums and an ECM, and just do that if you wish. But you can also do some fun stuff and um, plan this out to the slot. This will fit four ER mediums, an ECM, mask, and stealth armor. So you can be the stealth armor flea that will swing around the backfield just completely unable to see not only the fact that you're using stealth, you're not on radar, but the fact that you're a flea and you could like run underneath people's legs and they wouldn't even notice you're so small and just be an annoying prick in people's sides. That could be pretty fun. You could also do that same sort of design with a light PPC or something along those lines. And just be that annoying prick out in the backfield that, oh my god, where is that fire coming from? Sort of mentality. Which could be kind of fun. Moving on to the fire ant. Which they again, note the fire ant is not a hero mech. I guess they're really trying to get that across. This is very similar to the 19. As it has three energy. One in the head. One in each side torso. And then six ballistics, three in each arm. 
So you can do extremely similar builds to the 8 uh, machine gun build. But with a little bit more of an energy focus. So say 3 ER smalls and 6 light machine guns and some quantity of ammo. You might run into a little bit of speed. Base management issues with that as uh, when I was calculating I just ran out of critical slots in the machine gun variants the 19 and the fire ant may be fine to leave as single heat sinks to get that extra space for them in order to take full ferro and full endo because three ER smalls that would be all your heat generation you're really not going to need double heat sinks with that so you could do like three ER smalls and a bunch of LMGs and standard heat sinks, and that would actually probably work. Um, you can also do it on things like this, as well as all of these mechs that have uh, the 17, the 15, and the fire ant uh, for your torso-based energy. Uh, if you're doing those builds where I said you could do like one PPC, you need to strip the arms completely of armor in order to make that to fit. It's just... I missed that when I was talking about it earlier. But yeah, you can do things like the small laser, machine gun. You could do the, the single PPC design on this as well with mask if you wish. But you know, it is equivalent, I'd say. Maybe a little bit of the better energy ballistic mix than the 19. But it's not, ah, not OP compared to the 19. It's just a slightly different play style. And then we have the hero, the Romeo 5000, with a total of 5 energy and 2 missile. We got 2 energy in each arm and energy in the CT, and 1 missile in each side torso. And like I said for the 19, which had 1 missile, at this weight you're not running CIRMs. Like maybe, maybe you put your entire payload space towards like a pair of CIRM 4s, that's it, and that wouldn't be worth it. So... I think the only time you're really going to be running missiles on the Romeo 5000 is rockets. And you can do something like, say, four, maybe five ER mediums if you can uh, shift around some armor or such. And then like a pair of rocket 20s or a pair of rocket 15s, depending on how many lasers you take. Very nice. You know, just have that out of nowhere, huge damage coming in from behind. Uh, flank around somebody, all of a sudden just whoomph, their back is open, follow up with four ER mediums down their center torso on their back, and maybe you one-shot a medium. Maybe you severely damage a heavy in assault. People are running very much back armor these days, so that seems kind of fun. But it is a one-shot weapon, so you have to capitalize on that particular um a chance that you get and well it'll be a fun mech to make a video about that's all i'm going to end with that on is that i will make a video with that build and i'm pretty sure every single mech warrior youtuber will because it's a funny thing and that's good for views but overall i feel like you're getting some pretty good variants in the standard pack if you just want to go for that is fairly cheap at just 15 dollars if i'm not mistaken if I remember correctly, yep. So, standard pack of the 17, 15, 19 is pretty good. You're going to get your ballistic boat. You're going to get some energy boat. It's, you're going to be able to make it work. And then if you want to go for a little bit of different play style, you can get the reinforcements. And if you want to have the rocket memes, you can get the hero. But, back up to the concept art here. And it is a tiny mech. It is a bulbous mech, if I want to say it that way. As it's not like the piranha which was very flat across the chest and therefore it had a lot of surface area when you're looking directly at it this is a rounded mech it is very much like the locust i'd expect the flea to be the exact same size and dimensions to the locust just uh, that's what i would expect you can also probably expect similar quirks as to the locust uh, the rate of heat loss which has now been replaced with that heat dissipation because of the um, heat sinks outside of the engine that are required there's going to be some form of leg durability most likely and there'll probably be some other minor weapon quirks of some kind 
But otherwise, we take a look at the hard points for this. All of the torso mounted stuff is like top of the mech. You can't get higher. So if you can see it, you can shoot it. But most likely, even if they were all down here in this sort of chin mount, yeah, that would just be easy as well to do because the amount you have to move forward with this in order to clear, it's not like a heavy or an assault where you're only trying to clear a little bit because you actually have some momentum when you're trying to get back. This, you're probably not going to be stopping and peaking. So really the hard point locations don't matter as much, but they are nice and high. So if you are doing sort of the ERPPC peak design with a mask or ECM, you will be harder to hit, which is nice for the return fire. But other than that, I think that this will be extremely similar to the Locust, the Piranha in terms of playstyle. So if you like those kinds of mechs, you might like this mech as well. Uh, it will be extremely cheap in terms of Seabills and MC when it eventually comes out for those currencies, as it is a 20 tonner. So maybe that's a... Uh, Maybe not requiring people to uh, purchase it immediately, but it is up to you to decide how you spend your money. I think it's going to be a pretty decent mech, and uh, that's going to be it for this Should You Buy. Thanks for watching, and good hunting.